I am just the biggest sucker for Pelham, Pelham, whatever blue. It is ridiculous. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Austin Randolph. Um, if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you're a new viewer, uh, make sure you subscribe. If you kind of like what I do, make sure you visit the links below. If you want to grab one of these, I'll have my Sweetwater link down below for this and for the amplifier for the day, which is a Marshall DSL-1 head. Um, follow me on TikTok and on the Instagram, same username as here. Uh, the big one is subscribe if you like what I do, but um, that's all done. So let's talk about one of the better Epiphones I've played in a long time and one of the cheapest. So this is an Epiphone SG Special P90. Yes, I finally got a guitar with P90s. And it's one of those things where I bought it for two reasons. One... Uh, per the first uh, bit of the video, I'm a sucker for Pelham Blue. I mean, I bought this guitar, one, because it's so, so cheap, and if I completely hated it, if it's hanging on my wall, I will like the way it looks, and it looks pretty. So, that's why I bought it. But, um, mostly, you hear from older guitar players all the time about how everybody has to own a guitar with P90s in it, and I don't. So... Now I do. Um, and I kind of have a lot to talk about with this guitar because it surprised me. We're doing a uh, like top to bottom thing like normal. So up top you have a Kalamazoo style headstock, which I love, I love the name. Mostly because, uh, you know, it's on the west side of the state. I'm in like the Detroit area. And Kalamazoo is home to Western Michigan University. 
Uh, Western Michigan University is the school everybody goes to to just party their ass off. So uh, I've spent a lot of time in Kalamazoo and at WMU. So uh, the Kalamazoo headstock, it's okay by me. Um, what's unique about the uh, SG Special, and I think on the SG Juniors too, I'm not sure, is you have the button style tuners because, uh, you know, I don't actually know why outside of, uh, you know, to make it faithfully old timey, but hey, there you go. Um, you have a polyurethane finish, obviously, on the whole thing, so you don't have a, uh, you know, traditional nitro, which the good part of a poly finish is if your hands are kind of sweaty, uh, it's a lot less sticky on the neck than like a thick Gibson style nitro lacquer would be. Uh, la, 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 neck profile. I always like to talk a lot about neck profiles because, uh, you know, that's a big factor for me when I'm buying a guitar and not a, I don't hear like a ton of people go super in depth in YouTube videos. Neck profile is very skinny. It's very thin and it's, uh, about it, it, thin and wide, but I wouldn't call it like crazy Ibanez, like super D shaped or anything. But it's definitely a very, uh, like, 60s slim taper kind of style neck. This whole thing is, like, trying to be a faithful recreation of Gibson's late 60s, you know, SG with P90s in it kind of a thing. A fretboard, I know it's, uh, what is, what is, what is Gibson, uh, Epiphone rather use? Laurel, right? Indian Laurel. Um, it's a little lighter than, like, a cut of rosewood would be. I don't get as hung up on that as a lot of old heads, old heads, you know, like more traditional guitar players do. Keep it oiled and hydrated and it'll look good. Um, the frets, frets feel good, man. Frets are not crazy heavy like, you know, you're gonna find out of a custom shop polish, but they're not crunchy, they're good. Uh, fret ends feel really good. Uh, I can't really find anything that bothers me outside of maybe one side all the way up here but outside of that the frets are good again at this price point checks the box for me good well done uh moving down the body a little bit uh you come to the oh ooh, neck dive we got to talk about neck dive how is the neck dive on this guitar let me scoop back all right it's on my leg It's still there. It's still there, and uh, it's going to be with an SG. However, it's not as bad or violent or like, ah, as you'll find on my Gibson SG standard that I, I did a video about uh, a long time ago, my white one. This feels like the weight is more evenly distributed. I, I said that weird. Uh, maybe because of the button tuners, maybe because just everything is lighter, maybe the neck is way skinnier, which it is. Um, it feels like the weight distribution is a little more, and, uh, oh my god, man, this guitar, it's so light. Like, it's, it weighs what feels like nothing. The finish, I think the finish looks great. Uh, technically it's called Faded Pelham Blue. And it looks a little more, there's more of a mint green hue to it uh, than the normal Pelham Blue, but there's plenty of sparkle in it. I think it looks really good. Uh, I'm, I'm a sucker for this, just like I'm a sucker for Fender's Shell Pink. I just, I think it's a really good color. But we got to talk about P90s. We have to talk about the reason that you would buy this guitar. And uh, my first experience owning a P90 guitar. And you know, it's a different experience, but I'm pleasantly surprised. Let me put it that way. Um, I'm a big, big fan of the neck pickup in particular. Uh, so these are Epiphone's own pickups uh, designed after, well, designed after, uh, I guess, a famous Seth Lover pickup from back in the day. Um, the neck pickup is really, really almost, I'm not going to say reminiscent of a Stratocaster neck pickup, but I got similar vibes in the like, the bigness and the clarity and not necessarily like the creaminess you'd expect out of like a Gibson or Epiphone neck pickup. Um, there's still the brightness there, 
but it's very open and well-rounded. The highs are there, the mids are there, um, which was a really pleasant surprise. Uh, middle position for me personally, it got kind of quacky, like quackier than I expected it to, which um, if you were playing some funky stuff, I'm sure would be great. It was just quackier than I expected it to be. Uh, and t while I'm saying something good about all the configurations, bridge pickup. Bridge pickup can handle a shocking amount of gain and dirties up really, really well. Um, for the dirty sound bits in this video, I mean, I only have my gain at like 10 o'clock on my amp, not like gun to 10, but like 10 o'clock. So like less than halfway. Um, and man, this thing, it dirties up really well. And this is a little rock and roll machine. Well, I always have to say something negative about if I'm going on a positive rant like that, right? Um, the hum is there. It's not as bad as you'd find in like a, a very reissue Fender pickup, like the 60 cycle hum. It's not as bad, um, but I kind of, it's funny, like I was playing this and I almost forgot that, wait a minute, these are single coil pickups. Yeah, there's going to be a hum. So, you know, most people probably know that, but just so you know. I haven't gotten to the best part yet. This guitar is $450. And oh my God, man. I was just so pleasantly surprised with like, okay, I need to buy a P90 guitar. I want it to look great hanging on my wall just in case I, it doesn't drive with me. For $450, the frets are great. Uh, the neck dive doesn't annoy me as much just because I think it's the weight is distributed a little better than your SG standard, which is a little heavier in all aspects. Um, but this is <laughs> for a decent set of P90s in a guitar that, like I said, I just, I could not believe how, how little this weighs. Sorry if I'm stressing you out by, you know, wobbling it around like that. Um, but the nut is cut well, the frets feel good. The pickups sound really good. They're really unique and different, and I'm glad I have them. Um, the electronics work. I mean, man, this is a great little rock and roll machine. And rock and roll machine, the cleans are beautiful, and it looks really unique. And, the, you know, I'm, I think I might be joining the old heads in that, like, I think, you know, if playing guitar is your thing or your hobby, whatever you want to call it, uh, I think everybody should have a set of P90s because this is a super, super unique, cool guitar. And for $450, it's at a price point that's like super, super accessible to most people. My intention really wasn't to come off like super used car salesman guy in this video, but I just really, I'm trying to be genuine in that this thing really impressed me and I really like it. And I did not know if I was going to. Like nobody sends me these, these guitars to make videos of. This is not free shit to me. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. So do you guys own an SG with P90s? Am I completely off base? Um, do you also agree with me that I've been playing Epiphones for ever since I started playing and Epiphone has never been this good. And for like four years now, every Epiphone I pick up feels good. And last question for the comment section is um, P90s. How do you feel about them? Because uh, I think like if I'm getting into, if I ever have a couple grand to burn and I want to buy a nice Gibson, I think I might be looking at a one with P90s in it because of how much I like this little thing. So that's all I got for this week. Thanks for uh, sticking around everybody and let me know what you think below. And until next week. I'll see you guys around.